I'm Dr. Daniel Cantor, Neurology in Real Time, and I'm joined here by the premier MS neurologist in the United States, by Dr. Fred Loveland, who is professor of neurology at the Icon School of Medicine, Mount Sinai in New York, and director of the Corrine Goldsmith Dickinson Center for Multiple Sclerosis. You were awarded the presidential lecture, which meant that you had to do some work in order to get that award. You spoke about the McDonald criteria. Can you tell people back home, firstly, what is the McDonald criteria and why is it important to them? So the McDonald criteria are the guidelines we use for diagnosing MS. That is assuring that someone who presents with a typical syndrome is going to meet the criteria for diagnosing. And on the other hand, trying to exclude those who don't meet it and may need further time or further investigation to sort it out. But it codifies both clinical and MRI and spinal fluid data to assist clinicians in making the diagnosis. I studied neurology at a place where you used to be, so at, at Thomas Jefferson University. And Elliot Mancall taught me, and he told me that MS is a diagnosis of separation in time and space. So why do we need criteria? Well, because the criteria for diagnosing, not for differentially diagnosing, lots of diseases give you dissemination in time and dissemination in space. But it's a hallmark of MS. Mm -hmm. It just has to match the rest, a typical presentation, uh, optic neuritis, partial myelitis, brainstem cerebellar syndrome, and then appropriate MRI changes. If a person back home is watching this and they have a diagnosis of MS, and their doctor diagnosed them, but now that person goes online and looks at the McDonald criteria, the, the latest version, the 2017 version, and says, wait, I don't meet that criteria, yet my neurologist, whom I trust, gave me a diagnosis. Should they say their neurologist is wrong, or what should they do next? Well, they're welcome to ask their doctor how he made the diagnosis, but you can diagnose MS without meeting McDonald criteria. You just have to do it with caution, and over time, and make sure you've excluded other possibilities. Do you think it would be better if we called it the McDonald Research Criteria for Multiple Sclerosis, or the Criteria for Research in Multiple Sclerosis, to clarify to people that this is not the only way of making a clinical diagnosis? It may be the way that we bring people into clinical trials, which are very important. Without clinical trials, we wouldn't have any of the medicines. But do you think we should make that clarification? No. So McDonald was designed for use both by clinicians in clinical trials and by regulators. Okay. And, and, but they have different uses for them, but it codifies things so the clinician can utilize it. You know, if he has someone, he says, well, I'm not so sure, here's where I am on this, and I've excluded other things, they can feel more comfortable about their diagnosis and then formulate their treatment plan. Well, Dr. Lublin, you were the one who I did the first video with a decade ago in Dusseldorf, Germany. We used it with a flip cam. Now we're using an iPhone, both small devices. I want to thank you so much for everything you do for the MS community, and congratulations on the Presidential Award. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you for joining us.